Hey, my name is Chris and welcome to part two of my big haul or my big recent haul. As I said in part one, I do buy perfumes throughout the year, but I end up buying a significant proportion of my fragrances at the end of the year because of all the good specials. And I wanted to get through the second half of some of my recent pickups to share them with you. None of these were blind buys, zero. I'm very proud of myself. All the ones I picked up in part one and part two were thoughtfully purchased because I had had a sample or I'd tried them previously and wanted to add them to my collection. And I have a lot of fragrances to get through, so I'm just going to jump right in and I'm going to start the list with two fragrances made by the same house. And these were perfumes I smelled maybe three or four years ago from a perfume subscription that I belong to. It's Olfactif. I think I was one of the first subscribers in 2014 and I still belong to it to this day. It's a monthly subscription. I think I get three little samples sent to me, but these two perfumes were in one of my monthly subscriptions. I remember liking them when I tried them and I think pretty soon after that tried to buy the bottles and they were very hard to find. I thought they got discontinued. They did not. I was able to track them down fairly easily on the Dayson website and it is winter and winter nights. So I'm going to start with winter, which is my favorite. And this is very much a fragrance that reminds me of a Christmas tree, like a spa Christmas tree. You took, um, you took some sort of evergreen, maybe a pine or a spruce, and you just dipped it in lavender and sprinkled a little bit of cardamom and then parked it over in the corner and it would just give off this vibe of a spa Christmas tree. It's very fresh, very aromatic. The lavender is very prominent in here, but it's so fresh with those evergreen notes that I really like it. Lavender is kind of hit and miss with me and I do really like it in here. The cardamom gives it a little bit of spiciness and the dry down is very, very woody. I would say um, longevity is moderate, mild to moderate, but you really have to like a realistic evergreen or a lavender to enjoy this. Otherwise, you might think that this smells like a car air freshener, which I do not. I think it smells more like a spa Christmas tree. The second one that I remember liking, but smelling it again all these years later, it, and it could be that my tastes have changed. I don't like it as much as I remember liking it the first time. I would say we're uh, we're dating right now. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. I haven't ghosted it yet. And like I said, this was not a blind buy. I've smelled it years ago, but this is, it's a very smoky, woody perfume. And the smoke in here kind of borders on liquid smoke. Let's say you were grilling a steak in your backyard and you used your bare hands and you poured like liquid smoke all over your steak and then you went down and chopped down a tree and you brought the tree inside. When you were finished with those activities, your hand would smell like this perfume. So it's got this, this smokiness to it, this very campfire, almost a foody smokiness to it with a deeper, darker, evergreen, woody base. I wish that the, the greener notes, the more woody notes pulled stronger than those smokier notes because I know that's a popular note profile and I know very I know some very famous fragrances that smell have that kind of smoky, almost foody, smoky scent, but it's not really my favorite. So I might try this a little bit longer while the, while the weather's cold and then see if my spouse likes it because I'd much prefer the fresher, the fresher, more invigorating, more spa-like, aromatic take on these two perfumes. And those are gonna start off the haul. Those are gonna start the list. Okay, my next two pickups are from Sarah Horowitz Parfums, and these are both cleanly formulated, vegan, cruelty-free line. And the first one was my Christmas Day fragrance. It is called Wake Up Angel. I couldn't help it with the name, and it does smell very, almost has a Christmassy vibe to it. It is a winter freshie, but I think it will be very good in the summer. It's got pink pepper, bergamot, lime, some pedigrain, juniper, and some floral. So it is a very fresh, bright, invigorating, soft floral. It's more aromatic than woody, so it doesn't have a heavy woody base, even though it is. it does read somewhat holiday with that juniper berry, but the juniper berry and the citruses really kind of are front and center in this perfume. It has a pretty heavy musk in the dry down, and I would say performance is moderate. It's a moderate perfume, but it's lovely, very unique. The next one is called Hereafter. This is a sandalwood, 
heavy based perfume. Oh, it smells so good. It's very pretty. It has the same sandalwood in um, like Bois de Balancourt or Santal 33, that same fresh, dry, bordering on pickled sandalwood. It does not go in the pickled direction because there's a heavy dose of vanilla here. So there is, there's vanilla, there's a little bit of orange, there's cedar and I wanna say Ambroxan or ISO E, super in the dry down. But this is a, this is definitely a sandalwood forward fragrance. It's sandalwood, vanilla, and a little bit of freshness. The vanilla starts off in the beginning. It kind of fades in the middle of the fragrance and then it comes out again in the dry down. And this one is another moderate performer, but some beautiful new additions by Sarah Horowitz. The next one is another fragrance by the House of Zimmer. I showed Alchemy on the first video. I wasn't planning on picking up this bottle quite yet because it's very much a spring and summertime fragrance to me. They had a really good special in the summer, so I jumped on the bottle knowing I was going to be purchasing it anyway. But this one is called Strange Paradise. This one kind of has that pina colada vibe to, to it. It is coconut and pineapple and a little bit of rum, some florals, a little bit of musk. This, the pineapple in here is very fresh and unripe. So it's bordering on green. So it's not that sticky, sweet type of a fragrance that a lot of you aren't fond of. This is very fresh and clean and zingy. Quite lovely. I haven't worn it. I had the sample. I had all of the samples from this line. So I tried all of them. There wasn't one single one from the house that I didn't like and I will probably add one more to my collection later on in the year. But they're another house that's cleanly formulated vegan and they are an Australian brand. But look forward to wearing Strange Paradise, a beautiful, musky, slightly boozy, fresh pineapple coconut concoction that just reads summer and vacation to me. I picked up a lot of cleanly formulated, vegan, sustainable fragrances over the past year. And this next one is one of my very favorite and I was really kind of thrilled. I found this small perfume house from California at the end of last year and I have every one of their fragrances because they offer fragrances in different sizes. But after doing the sample set, I immediately fell in love with this one and this is called Matahia Poppy. And I think it's named after there is a region in Southern California near Ojai. There's like a wilderness reserve there. But this one really struck a chord with me because this smells so similar to one of my favorite places in the United States, which is Southwest Utah. I used to go hiking down there every year, like a little girl's trip, little girl's trip, a girl's trip. I did that eight years in a row and it stopped with COVID and I'm ready to get back and do it again. This smells so much like the environment of when you're hiking down there in Southwest Utah. It's very dry, it's very arid, and they have these beautiful sage brushes. And as you're hiking, you walk along and you kind of run your hand and strip the sage. And then when you smell your hand after stripping the sage, it just smells so amazing. And a lot of that, a lot of that smell, that scent profile is in this bottle. And I think that's why it appeals to me so much. I don't believe it has sage in here as a note, but the way the notes are combined, they come together to read spa. Like this smells like this beautiful spa down in Southwest Utah. It's got papyrus and blood orange. It's got a little bit of ivy, juniper, like milk and some other notes, but I really pick up the more earthier aspect. I really think what I'm smelling is the papyrus and the ivy and the juniper together forming this, oh my gosh, this fantastic fragrance. And this smells like, I think their point of view on their website was like sitting in a clawfoot tub in the wilderness. And absolutely, it smells like the walk back at night when I'm walking to my room and I smell the desert and I smell all the dry vegetation around me. It's just so relaxing. And some of the spa products smell a little bit like this, but absolutely one of my favorite pickups of last year. So if you like the smell of wild sage, if you know, you know, if you love that smell, you will absolutely fall in love with this fragrance. And like I said, I think I have every one in their line they offer. This one's the biggest bottle and I think it was like $65. I'll put the price on the screen. And then they have, so this is a 30 ml, they have 15 ml and 10 ml. And I have the discovery set, so I have every single one in the line. 
I will speak about them in the future because many of them have a California DNA. They're very fresh. They're very outdoors. Some of them are aquatic. They're a little bit fruity and bright. So I will be wearing those more as the weather heats up. A wonderful line. If you're interested in cleanly formulated sustainable lines, this house is environmentally conscious. It's cruelty free, cleanly formulated vegan. And I think they're female owned and they are located in California. And the little, the lid I think is made of driftwood from the beach there. So highly recommend checking out their website and their products and their wonderful discovery set so you can get to know this amazing brand. So the next one is by the House of Commodity. This is PR and they sent me this bottle of velvet and this is the personal space. I don't have either two of the concentrations so I cannot tell you how this is in relationship to the, the bold and the expressive. This is a rose almond ambergris amber musk fragrance and i think this differs from the stronger version the, the expressive version the almond is very prominent it's like a toasted almond but the musk in here is much stronger and it's a little bit more quiet and when i smelled this i immediately thought of another fragrance that i love it is by m mekaleff and is called gayak and I just adore that fragrance. And I did a side-by-side -side wear. This one has a little bit more smokiness that Gaik doesn't have, but they're very, very similar. And this also reminds me of a, like a watered down by the fireplace. So that kind of vibe, that smoky, slightly sweet, ambery vibe. And like I said, this one is not beast mode. This is an intimate scent, but surprisingly, I got this to last around eight hours. And again, the musk in this is pretty strong and it comes out more in the base but a very quiet scent. So a good bedtime scent, a scent that you can wear around others. It's not going to offend people. So a pickup from Commodity. Okay, now I'm going to show three fragrances from the House of Trusardi. I kind of went haywire with this line because they showed up on Joma Shop for a tremendous price. They were like less than half. So I scooped up, I scooped up several of them. I'm only gonna talk about three. I just literally grabbed three because I didn't want this to be a marathon video, but these three I picked up, I love. We'll start with this one. This is called Limited, no, Limitless Shopping. Oh my gosh, this is a fabulous take on an apple perfume. If you thought you didn't like apple perfumes because it were synthetic or too juvenile, this is a great interpretation of an apple perfume because it has an apple fruitiness it has a little bit of florals and it has other notes that just make it a really well composed perfume. I wanna say like honey and beeswax and powdery notes, some musk. This is just really, really nice. This is one of my favorite apple perfumes right now because it's not too sweet. There's nothing artificial about it. It has um, a lovely femininity to it and it just reads elegant. It's a smoothly composed fruity perfume. Um, the next one is one, okay, this is the only one I did buy blindly. Okay, I forgot. I bought this blindly. I had never tried this, and oh my gosh, it turned out to be one of my favorite. It is called Behind the Curtain. Oh, if you love saffron and amber and woods, oh my goodness, this might be right up your alley. If you don't like Baccarat 540 because of that Band-Aid-y smell, you probably won't like this because I believe that's a mixture of kind of the spices and the saffron. And it's very prominent here. The saffron is so prominent, but it's just so warm and cozy. This is sweet, spicy, warm, ambery, woody yumminess. There's cloves, there's amber, there's labdanum, which is basically sweet and vanillic and ambery and leathery. Patchouli, there's an evergreen note in here and something else. But this is just a fabulous perfume, very warm, very cozy, something wonderful. I love to wear it in the cold weather. I wore it one time to work because I just wanted to. This is an addictive scent. This is a scent that I just want to keep spraying. It is light wearing too. So it's not a super heavy fragrance. There are some heavy notes, but it doesn't wear very strongly. So maybe five hours I need to reapply. I don't care. It just is right up my wheelhouse spicy, warm, ambery, woody, patchouli, labdanum. It just screams cozy blanket. Okay, I may have to cut this down a little bit. I just had to change the battery. So the last one in the trio was this one that got a lot of hype, I wanna say about maybe a year, year and a half ago. 
and this is Passaggiata in Galleria, and I'll put the name below. This is the fragrance that was very popular because it has that nutty note, that hazelnut note. So it's hazelnut, coffee, cinnamon. I get a very prominent floral. I wish the I wish the gourmand notes were a little bit more strong than the florals. I definitely get some sort of white flower, and it dries down. Musky, but it's very strong. Has a little bit of coconut, and um, the florals last really long in here. So I was so thrilled it popped up. Not only could I find another bottle, there was a time where you couldn't find a bottle, and the bottles that I found were close to $300. I think it's running around $80. I will link it below. But oh my gosh, uh, glad I finally picked up a bottle of this gem that was hard to find for a while. Especially if you like, if you are afraid of nutty notes, this is an easy nutty perfume to enjoy as long as you can tolerate a little bit of white flowers. That's why I'm surprised my friend Susan likes this one because I do detect kind of a prominent white floral and maybe I'm just a little bit more sensitive to that note. So the next one is another one by Ducita. I think I showed three Ducitas last time. This one is Isara. This was one of my two favorites from the line. It is one of their pricier ones and I'd had my eye on this for a while. So when I got a really good deal at the end of the year, I kind of snatched it up. This is a tobacco prominent or a tobacco forward fragrance. It's very unisex. It's a lovely take on tobacco. This is tobacco. There's tonka in here, but it has an herbal, sweet, soapy, woody freshness. The tobacco in here is sweet, but it's not overly honeyed. And there's definitely a bit of a soapy vibe to this. It's soapy, but it doesn't go screechy and it's not overly green. It's probably like sage and pine. So slightly green soapiness, it's not screechy. It is a little like, has a touch of grassiness in the dry down. There's vetiver, a little bit of amber and some musk. And I would say um, performance is moderate. This is quite lovely. This is not quite black tie fragrance, but something I would definitely wear on a date. This fragrance kind of reminds me of somebody who likes the outdoors, likes to be very active and casual and down to earth, but also likes to dress up too. So there's something down to earth about this fragrance, but also something elevated as well. So love this one. Okay, I think I'm gonna do three more and then call it a day. Starting to get very busy in my house. Lots of activities, lots of noises. The next one is Velvet Chocolate by Theodorus Calatinas. Oh. This one, is, this one is for people who really like their chocolate to smell like actual chocolate. So this one kind of reminds me of either a flourless chocolate cake or a chocolate lava cake. It's that kind of chocolate. So very rich, very decadent, very dense, but more vanilla in the dry down. It gets slightly more vanilla in the dry down. It's still a chocolate forward fragrance, but it has vanilla, chocolate, cacao, and tonka. So, you know, one of those chocolate forward fragrances for those who actually do like to smell like food. If you don't like your chocolate fragrances to smell overly foody, you might want to pass on this one. But it's a great one for those of you'd like to smell like a dessert because I think the fragrances in this line, you know, are like $50 or less. And I remember I've only worn it like three times and I would say the performance is moderate. It's not beast mode, but it's not super quiet. And the second to last fragrance is one that has really kind of stumped me. I was, last year, Gabby from Gabby Loves Fragrances, she reached out to me, um, I think it was through Instagram, a DM, and asked me if she could send me her fragrance. And I thought, sure, great, I'd love to try it. I love chocolate. I think everybody knows about the fragrance Chocolate Queen. And first of all, let me just say how impressive that is that a fragrance house finds you impressive enough to want to collaborate and do a perfume. So kudos to you, Gabby. But when I first got this, I didn't feel like I didn't want to do a review because I felt like it needed to sit a little bit before it kind of came to its fruition. I have fragrances in my collection that smelled much differently like the second and third month in. And that was the case with this one. When I first got it, I just, I really couldn't smell anything after a couple hours. And I kept trying, I kept trying, so I let it ma I let it macerate. And I think I've had this for at least two months. So I do feel like it is, you know, coming more to life now. And it's a very different type of chocolate than, than I was anticipating. And I know just from being on other social media platforms that many, many people love this one. And I think if you 
love the type of non-foodie gourmand, you're going to love this because the chocolate in here isn't overly foodie at all. It took me forever to come up with what this smelled like to me, but if you had a hairspray, and I think hairspray smells amazing, if you had a hairspray that was chocolate scented, it would smell very similar to this. So the, the chocolate in here kind of leans in the Tootsie Roll department. And I think that's from like the Dolce de Leche in here. So it is definitely a gourmand, just like Minui et Demi is a gourmand, but that is not an overly foody or sweet fragrance. And I think this is kind of, it's, it's not the same fragrance that doesn't smell anything alike, but it's the same type of gourmand. So I would say this is moderate wearing and I think it was sold out because it was just so popular. So glad I finally let this rest for a couple months. And I know some very picky people in the perfume world, I'm not, I don't wanna mention names, that are very picky with their gourmand fragrances that absolutely love this one. So definitely worth getting your nose on if you are, if you are one of those people that hate to smell like food. And the last one, I think I'm gonna stop. I think I have two more, I have three more. I'm just gonna stop at the last Ducita that I actually left upstairs and I'm too lazy to go up and get it. <laughs> it is one that I fell in love with when I went through the sample set, my, the discovery set that my lovely friend Yulia sent me. I was totally shocked that I fell in love with this one because it is a white floral perfume and I can struggle with white floral perfumes mainly because they're just they just smell artificial. The one I fell in love with was Melody de l'Amour, and I'll put a picture up. It is the best interpretation of a white floral, specifically tuberose and gardenia. I grow gardenias, they are very difficult to grow. I live in zone seven. It is very difficult to grow them, but if you ever smelled a real tuberose or a real gardenia, they are beautiful smelling white florals. I fell in love with tuberose, on my trip to Maui and I had a lei made of tuberoses and oh my gosh, I fell in love with that flower and for I think 10 years, my spouse gave me, for my anniversary, gave me a big bouquet of tuberoses. So I love those, I love the real flowers but their interpretation in fragrances can be just a little off-putting or a little bit hard, particularly if you know what the real flower smells like and Melody de l'Amour is just the best interpretation of those two white flowers. So I just fell in love with it. It has a little bit of sweetness. I wanna say there's a little bit of honey, maybe some fruits and you know some musk. And she always has, I think it's probably cedar. She likes to use cedar in her fragrance, cedar and vetiver. I don't really pick up a whole lot of vetiver, but there is, there's always a woody base and it's just a stunning, beautiful perfume that I will be wearing. I actually just took it out of the box. It was still in its wrapper for like two months. I just took it out of the box because I have new perfume storage and I was, you know, arranging everything. It is not something I would want to wear in the wintertime. It's very much a spring and summer perfume and definitely one I would consider wearing to a wedding because it's just that beautiful and special. And I think I'm gonna call it quits since I am filming three videos today. So I wanna get this up and out because I still have that Give away the Maisa sample set. Put your name down below. The UK distributor, the person that I work with and I order all my fragrances, my Maisa fragrances from, was so kindly sent some sample or discovery sets. So these are my giveaway. This was a holdout from part one of my haul. So I'd like to finish this up and get some new homes for these fragrances I want you guys to try because it's one of the best houses I have discovered recently. So let me know in the comments below if you wanna be part of that drawing. And I will let it run for one more week, so that'll give it two weeks, and then I will just let you know. So like usual, in order to be eligible for the giveaway, you just have to be a subscriber, and that's it. And let me know in the comments. And with that, I think I'm going to call it the end for my part two of my large end of the year, beginning of the year haul. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you picked up. Any surprises. Hopefully you enjoyed your time with me and I will see you on the next one.